Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Peter Beans and I'm one of the presenters participating in the Data Dunkers Data Analysis Program. If you're here, there's a good chance that you started the hoops activity, but I never got a chance to finish it or save your graph. So this video is intended to help you do that. Chances are uh, you learned about this program through a presentation similar to this. Uh, if you need to get back to the slideshow, uh, the URL is bit.ly bit.ly slash dd dash slides. I'll put that URL in the video description. Throughout the slideshow, you had an opportunity to uh, shoot some hoops. And anytime we encountered this graphic, if you were to click on the graphic, you would get a form like this. And on this form, you would put your first name. So every time I did it, uh, instead of my first name, I just used my initials. The important thing was that every time we filled in this form, we had to be consistent. So, for instance, if I did, you know, PB this time, let me zoom in, uh, then I can't do P uh, space B the next time. And you'll see why later on, why that's so important. So you put in your first name or your initials, you put in the shot distance, and then whether or not you made the shot. And then for every shot, you fill in the form again. So if I tried from six feet this time, and if I didn't make the attempt, I would click on false. And we had a Jupyter notebook prepared for you. And again, that link I will put in the description below. So the Jupyter notebook looks like this. Uh, you may or may not have started it. Uh, the first thing we have to do in this notebook is open it either in Callisto or in Colab. So I'll go ahead and open this one in Callisto. In Callisto, you have a choice of logging in with your Google ID or your Microsoft ID. So in my case, I'm going to log in with my Google ID. So we start with the section called Setup. And we really don't have to worry about that in Callisto. Uh, that's really for if this gets opened in Google Colab because in Colab there's a good chance that the Plotly Express library that we need, um, so that's the library that does the actual plotting, uh, there's a good chance the Plotly Express is not installed in Colab. So by running this line, uh, it installs it. In our case in Callisto, we don't have to worry about it. So we'll just jump ahead to the next section labeled imports. So if you had done the exercises with us, you would have learned that um, there's two libraries that we, we really care about. One is called Plotly Express, and the other one is called Pandas. Plotly Express is used to do the actual graphing, and Pandas is used to import and to manage the data. So we have to use the import command. And first I'll import Plotly Express. And when we do it, we set up an alias. So it's import Plotly Express as PX. So that means, here, let me zoom in for you. So that means that throughout the program, we can just refer to Plotly Express as PX instead of having to type Plotly underscore Express all the time. We do something similar for pandas. So we import pandas as PD. So the alias would be PD. And once we've got that entered, then we can go ahead and come up here and click Run. And if we don't get any errors, then we'll get a number up here here. Oh, what I should have mentioned was throughout this Jupyter Notebook, I've got sections that look like this. So in this case, importing from Sheets Lesson. So if you were to open this, I'm just going to open it in, in a new tab. This is the actual lesson where we learned about those concepts. So ideally, ideally, we encourage you to try to complete this notebook without referring to the, to the lessons. But if you have to, that's fine. Okay, so once we've imported the libraries, then we have to input the data. Now, the data came from a Google Sheet. And this is what the Google Sheet looks like. So there's four columns. One column is timestamp. The next column is first name, then shot distance, then shot made. Now, we can't bring it in directly as a Google Sheet, so we have to do a little bit of uh, editing, uh, which you'll see here. 
So this is the URL. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the URL in its entirety. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it down here into the cell where we have a variable called URL equals, and I'm going to paste it in there. Now, what the instructions say right here is that we have to edit the URL. So this last part, after the last slash, we have to delete. Be careful not to delete that, that final single quote. We have to keep that there. We're going to replace that part that we just deleted with this. And let's go ahead and run that. And that ran without error. You can tell because we have a number right there. So then what we have to do is actually read in the data. When we ran this line here, it didn't read in the data. All they did was assign the URL, that new URL, to a variable called URL. By the way, what this extension does is it makes the Google Sheet looks, look like a CSV file. And, and importing CSV files is quite routine for pandas. In fact, being a CSV file, that gives us a hint for the function that we need. So from the pandas library, we're going to use read CSV, and then we have to put in parentheses after that. And inside those parentheses, we have to put the URL. And if we go ahead and run that, and we know it ran because we've got a number right here. Okay, so now that we've read in the data, let's let's have a look at it. So there's there are different ways we can look at it. One is we can look at the top five rows. So the command to do that is head. And sure enough, there are there are the columns: timestamp, first name, shot distance, feed, and shot made. And it shows us the first five entries. We can also do tail, which you can probably guess does the bottom five rows. And we've got nine, three entries. There are the last entries that I did. We can also look at the columns. Columns is a little different. You'll notice the head and tail both had parentheses after it. Column, columns does not. And that will give us the name, the names of the columns as well. Okay, next what we have to do, so all this data that we have, if we were to look at the head again, okay, you can see that we've got everybody's data. Now, I'm not interested in David or MG, right? I just want to concentrate on me. So what we have to do is we have to filter out everything we don't want. So this shows exactly how we're going to do it. So we're going to create a filter and we're going to tell it that we want the first name to equal PB. Okay, and you have to be very careful about the quotes uh, where we have the equality. It has to be two equal signs. Okay, and then we're, in the next line, we're going to apply the filter and we're also going to sort the data and we want to sort it by shot distance. So I'm just going to take all of that right there. I'm going to copy it over top of these two lines. Now, in my case, I am PB, so that's the data I want to look at. You are not PB, so you would have to replace that PB with whatever first name or initials you used. So let me go ahead and run that. So this is my data, and you can see that it's sorted by the shot distance, which is what we did in the program right here. We told it to sort the shot distance. Okay. Now the next part, um, we need to consolidate the data. So what we want to do is we want to take all the, the two-foot data and we want to get an average. So in this case, you can see, just highlight all of that. So you can see that I attempted it four times and got it each and every time. 
So that's 100%. When we looked at the four foot data, I got it three times, so that's 75%. Okay, so that's what we want to plot. So this is something we haven't learned in the workshop yet, so we've just given the data for you. But essentially, we need to take the data and we want to group it by the shot distance. And then the math we want to do is we want to take the shot made column and take the average, the mean, and then multiply it by 100. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see you know, up here, when we looked at the two-foot data, we said that was 100%, so that checks. When we looked at the four-foot data, it's 75%, and that checks. Okay, and then finally, we're going to plot it. So, we're going to be doing a bar graph. So we see here, we've got px. TBD. So this TBD, it has to be replaced with the type of plot that we're doing. And in our case, we're doing a bar graph. So we replace that with bar. And then we've got my name there. So in your case, you know, you substitute Peter with your name. And then lastly, we have to do figure dot show with parentheses. And then I'll run that. Hundred percent, seventy-five percent, fifty percent, thirty-three percent, and twenty-five percent. Now to save this graph, right here there's an icon, this little camera icon. You just simply click on that icon and then save it to your hard drive. You may wish to rename it with something suitable, like you know, your name and then hoops, but that's totally up to you. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them in the comments below.